untangling the twisted tale of the bombing attempt aboard an American Airlines flight. I got up closer and I saw smoke coming up out of his hands. And then at that point I was just terrified. Building a new Afghanistan and cleaning out the caves where Al-Qaeda had been hiding. In the Holy Lands, the lack of joy this season. Families kept apart by guns. And the danger of debit cards, the damage a thief can do. From NBC News World Headquarters in New York, this is NBC Nightly News, reported by John Siegenthaler. Good evening, everyone. We're learning new information about the dramatic struggle on board an American Airlines jet where passengers and crew members fought to subdue a man they believed was trying to detonate a bomb. The suspect, who uses numerous names, is identified as Richard Reed. According to the FBI, preliminary tests have determined that there were two functional explosive devices in his sneakers. Passengers on the flight from Paris to Miami described the frightening experience thousands of feet over the Atlantic. NBC's Virginia Cha joins us from Boston's Logan Airport tonight, where the plane landed last night. Virginia? John, as the incident unfolded, authorities say Richard Reed struggled with two flight attendants, pushing one to the floor before finally being overpowered. The man in back, at the center of an intense investigation by the FBI. Witnesses on the plane say he was lighting matches, trying to set something on fire. A flight attendant confronted him. I just heard the flight attendant screaming for help, and I got up to see what was going on, and... And then uh, some other guys came up and started like pushing him down and trying to take, I guess it was matches from his hand. One person pulled his hair from behind, the stewardess jumped on top of him. The people just around him had just swarmed around the seat and jumped on top of him to, to subdue him and, and control him. And it was all very, very quick. Witnesses say he fought back, biting this flight attendant's hand before finally being subdued and restrained. I think the stewardess at one point said pass belts forward and people sort of from the back of the cabin who'd really seen what had happened were taking off belts, were all passing them forward and they were tying up the, uh, you know, they were tying them up uh, with these belts. Once passengers were safely at the terminal, the bomb squad boarded the American Airlines plane to retrieve the shoe. Following the Boston incident, security at many airports now tighter. At Seattle, Tacoma, in Washington, and here at Logan, shoes were being inspected today. Richard Reed is being held at a county correctional facility about an hour south of Boston. Flight 63 passengers finally reached Miami this morning. I feel like extremely lucky. And it was so close. I mean, if that flight attendant wouldn't have been walking down that aisle at that moment, I don't know what else could have what would happen. So. And NBC News has learned tonight that the FAA is issuing a new security directive to all airlines, ordering them to take extra specific security precautions. John? NBC's Virginia Chad, Boston's Logan Airport. Thank you. And at the Paris airport, where Flight 63 originated, authorities are having trouble explaining why Reed was permitted to board. Here's NBC's Jim Maceda. Today, French authorities, embarrassed by the potential terrorist attack, have launched an investigation. So far, they have few answers. It's hard to explain a number of things, says Air Police Chief Patrick Duby. Why, for instance, was passenger Richard Reed questioned on Friday when he reportedly tried but failed to make the same flight, but not on Saturday when he appeared again? It does look as if, though we're not sure yet, there were reasons why that should have been done in this case, and it wasn't. Despite tight security at Charles de Gaulle International Airport, Reed, traveling on a British passport, cleared all the routine checks before boarding American Airlines Flight 63. And passengers wonder, how could someone carrying explosives in a shoe not be detected? It's kind of scary. You know, you would hope that security be a little better. And such a breach could happen anywhere else in Europe where police rarely check European passports and standard security equipment, like metal detectors, don't detect most explosive materials. Bomb-sniffing dogs were on duty in Paris, but French police say they were not called in since Reed aroused no suspicion. And experts say that only in Israel, with aggressive questioning or profiling of passengers, is security high enough to have prevented the Flight 63 incident? We ought to be doing now. It would probably catch out somebody like this guy. 
but others say that would be too abusive of passengers' rights of privacy. The French propose more dog teams and more vigilance, but admit that even then, terrorists could still slip through the net. Jim Maceda, NBC News, After London. That's been happening, uh... It was the courageous actions of Flight 63 passengers which prevented disaster. And as NBC's Frederica Whitfield reports, a pro athlete was one of them. At six foot eight, Kwame James, who plays pro basketball in France, usually stands out. At the University of Evansville in Indiana, his 83-inch wingspan and quick reflexes made him a top recruit. And yesterday, as one of 185 passengers on board American Flight 63, James's size and bravery made him a hero. I was 10 rows ahead of this guy. Three and a half hours into the trip from Paris to Miami, James heard a flight attendant scream. She said help, and I ran back there, and poof, you know, all of a sudden I'm in the middle of it. I ran back there. Upon the request of our flight attendants, uh, held him down. But it wasn't easy, not even for a man James's size. He was quite big himself. He had to be uh, 6'4", 6'5", 220. He was just uh, unbelievably strong, almost possessed. And in the middle of the struggle, before James says two doctors on board managed to inject the suspect with sedatives, James recalls how the suspect shook up everyone with both his actions and his perfect English. I said, why are you doing this? What's your motive? And he said, you'll see. James spent the next two and a half hours guarding the suspect. I sat behind him and held his shoulders, and he had pretty long hair, so I, I held his hair. Tonight, James shrugs. He's not a standout, just one of 184 passengers with the same Christmas wish. I just want to go home. I was on my way to Trinidad, where my family's at. And now, try to forget what might have been. Frederica Whitfield, NBC News, Miami.